today we are going to learn how to find the resistance of a moving coil galvanometer and also calculate its figure of merit. We have to understand what a moving coil galvanometer is before we start looking for the resistance of the meter. Moving coil galvanometer works on the principle that whenever there is a current carrying coil placed in an external magnetic field, it is going to experience a torque. This torque is going to twist or turn coil and the amount of torque created will depend upon how much current we pass through it. So, the two that we are looking for the resistance would be the resistance of the coil that makes up the galvanometer and the second thing is the figure of merit which is how much current is required for one division of deflection. As you have seen here this is the face of the galvanometer and the divisions are marked here. So, the resistance would be of the coil which is inside it and the figure of merit would tell us how much current will give one division deflection for this particular galvanometer. Now, the apparatus that we require for this is a battery eliminator, two keys, galvanometer, one resistance box which we are going to call 1 and the second resistance box 2. The difference between the two is that the resistance box 1 goes up to 10,000 ohms while the other one which is a smaller resistance box is only up to 500 ohms. We have set this apparatus to find the value of resistance of our galvanometer. Let us study the circuit. This is the battery eliminator. From the positive we have the connection through the key with this resistance box 1 which has very high values of resistance. The other terminal from there goes through the galvanometer and our circuit is completed by this conductor wire. Parallel to the galvanometer we have got this resistance box 2. It will operate only when this key is inserted. Let us also understand before we proceed why do we call this half deflection. If you understand a parallel circuit and if you also talk about what happens to the current when it encounters two resistors connected in parallel. The current will divide and it will divide in the ratio of the resistances in the two branches. Now, we will call it half deflection because what we are going to try and do is use this shunt to make the deflection which is created in this by some current passing in the main circuit and reducing it to half and we will check that half current by seeing the deflection which we are observing is exactly half of what it was in the earlier case. As we do the experiment this will become clearer to you. So, having understood what we are trying to find in this experiment let us proceed to see what formulas we have to use. The formula for finding out the resistance of the galvanometer is G is equal to R s divided by R minus s. You might question that if this is giving me half deflection here, why do I need a formula? You need a formula because the current is flowing in this entire circuit. Resistance offered by this one also affects that current. When we divide it into two portions, one passing through the galvanometer and half of it going through this, this resistance will also contribute in a very small way. If this value is very much higher than the value of the shunt resistance, you are more and more accurate. The second formula that you will need for the value of calculation of uh, figure of merit is k is equal to 1 upon theta E divided by R plus G, where E is the EMF of the battery eliminator, R is the resistance from resistance box 1 and G is the resistance of the galvanometer. Let us now proceed to do the observations. First observation is 
what is the value of emf i am using you could read it from the knob here as we have selected two volts or you can find the accurate value of the output by using a voltmeter then you need to find how many divisions are there on one side of the zero in this particular galvanometer there are 30 divisions let us proceed with the experiment now because we cannot allow too much current to flow through the galvanometer we will start by taking out a high value of resistance in rb1 the highest that i have here is 10000 ohms so 10000 is the key that i remove the rest of the key should be pressed down so that no other resistance contributes towards this what will be the reading that we will select over here for that we just need at the as of now how much emf is being drawn from the eliminator so our knob can be selected to be put in say 2 volts position and that's the reading for the emf that we take next we study the galvanometer and see the optimum divisions that we have on either side of the zero in this case we have 30 so we will just record 30 here now we are ready to take readings for deflection here reducing the deflection to half its value by using our shunt box which is our resistance box 2 so we are now all set to start work we switch on the eliminator put the key in since the high resistance is already here some deflection would be seen in the galvanometer this value of deflection is 20 divisions so we will record that 20 divisions value and the resistance box reading in rb1 is 10000 now we will connect the shunt key that is in this auxiliary circuit when we do that the deflection in the galvanometer should reduce to zero the reason for that is that there is no resistance in resistance box 2 and therefore the current will now flow not through the galvanometer but through the wire here this wire takes care of the current and that is why there is zero deflection here now let us choose in this parallel circuit a resistance which will make this deflection half of the value which we had earlier so choosing by trial let us say we select 50 ohms from here the deflection would have reduced but not to exactly half the value because half of 20 would be 10 so this means that more current is passing through our shunt resistance as compared to the galvanometer so we need to increase the value of resistance in rb2 we are doing this by say choosing 100 ohms now and if you see carefully the deflection in our galvanometer is reduced to exact half value that means half of 20 to the value 10 that is what we need to record so 100 ohms is what we have here and the deflection becoming half is 10 we are ready to take another set of readings for which we will first switch off our shunt circuit and from our resistance box choose another value for which we can find the deflection in the galvanometer let us say we select a value of a thousand so our deflection is now 18 divisions here and so total reading here is 10,000 plus another thousand so that becomes 11,000 and our deflection is 18 our expected half deflection is 9 half of 18 so we put this in and again we can select from here and uh, the value as you see will come to half the value say for this is now 10 that means too much has been taken out now for 100 again you are getting the same value of deflection as half of 18 which is 
9. So, this becomes your second set. The next reading can again be taken by removing the shunt resistance off from the main circuit. Now, going for the third reading, as of now we have 10,000 and 1,000 there. Supposing I take out 2,000 and watch for the deflection in the galvanometer. As we see, the deflection should not come between two divisions because making or trying to get a half of that is not possible. Therefore, you can choose some other values along with it, so that you get exactly a division which can be halved. So, supposing I take out a 500 here and look for at my deflection, uh, this deflection is coming out to be closer to 16, but not quite taking another value out from here will give me now almost 16 there. So, what is the value we have in the resistance box 1? 10,000, 2,000 and 500 and 200. So, total of this would be 12,700. So, the reading corresponding to that in my galvanometer is 16. I can look for exact half which would be 8. So, putting the shunt circuit key on and with the same 100 key pulled out of the shunt box, my deflection reduces to a value of exactly half which is 8. So, I can record this 100 again and the half deflection reading as 8. Looking for the fourth reading, we have 10,000 out there and 2,000 I pull out another 2,000 and I can take out another 1,000. So, that is 15,000 out of the resistance box 1. Let us look at the reading here. This reading is suitable because it is a 14. So, next we put the key in the shunt circuit and try and pull out a resistance any value. This reading will not become half because there is too much current flowing through it. If I take out 100 again, this should reduce to a value of 7. So, that reading is fine. One more reading we can take because we should do at least 5 readings. So, let us say we pull out this stop the current in the shunt circuit and take a value here, look for the divisions in my galvanometer. This is not an ok reading, I pull out another 200 and let us see this is also not reducing to that much a value. So, let us take a combination, I have increased this 15 and I have 17,000 and let us see what the deflection is now. This is 11 not quite all right. Let us see this. The reading now is we are looking for a reading of 10 so that we can get an exact half value. Let us add up all these values 10,000, 5,000, and another 5,000 that is 20,000, 20,000, and 500, and another 200. So, 20,000 and 700 is the reading I am looking at and our deflection for the galvanometer is 10 and uh, let us put this key in and for a 100 let us see what the deflection in the galvanometer is it should reduce to 5. So, that is quite correct and we can put 100 here and the reduce reading as 5. Remember to switch off the circuit once you have taken all the readings, unnecessary current should not flow in any part of the circuit. So, for each one of these, you will use the formula and find out the exact value for resistance of the galvanometer. Our formula we must remember is R into S divided by R minus S, where R is the resistance which you take out from here, 
S is the resistance which you take out from the shunt resistance box. For each of your values, you will also be able to calculate the figure of merit. Thereafter, you can find a mean for that. So, average it out and report your result for both the resistance of the moving coil galvanometer as well as its figure of merit. You must also think why is this important? Why are we doing this experiment at all? That means you must understand what this meter can be used for. You have heard of the ammeter and the voltmeter, which is an accurate measuring device for the current and the potential difference. And to make it very accurate, you must work on the resistance of this particular meter as well as the figure of merit, because that will determine the range. Having established that, you can put small resistance in parallel with it and choose a range which will give you an ammeter of the required range. You can make a voltmeter by putting a resistance in series with this coil and thereafter making it of the required range again. So, it has multiple uses and that is why you did this experiment in the lab and learned a very simple way of finding the resistance of a moving coil galvanometer.